Hello, 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 hello. 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 <laughs> hi, well, Andrea. Hi, Kim. Hi, hi Debbie. Hello. Hi, Kim. Hi, everyone in the chat. Welcome to Ladies' Night, Monday, August 16th. Certainly one of our favorite shows to do, uh, where we select uh, women of influence, past or present, and we read on them. We, we pick our people during the week, and then we just mm -hmm. let each other know sort of before the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing what we find, isn't it? What sort of weaves the story oh, together. And, I'm, and, and every, yeah. every week I'm always curious of how it's all going to link together. This should be interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Kim, I just want to say welcome home. Thank you. How does it feel? It is home. It is. It's nice to be home. I mean, of course, we, you know, wanted to put Cassie in our suitcase, yeah. but, um, but it is. It's it's nice. To, it's always nice to, to be back home, and you know. And you got a good long visit with her, so you know you absolutely. Kind of yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No, we can't cannot <laughs> complain at all. And we made it there, and we made it back, and yeah. so yeah, we can't complain at all. So Out of curiosity, you. were the planes full? You know, with the travel. Um, the, the situation full. no they, they weren't full? full they weren't full and the airport was a breeze really? um, so the, the actual logistics were really easy um the only thing that was was more difficult was just knowing when we had to test where we had to test those kinds of details were yeah. the most confusing and 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 they kind of didn't you know it was it's a little bit confusing but as, if you do it beforehand it's it's doable it's doable, doable. and did people wear masks on the plane Oh yeah, yeah. So, okay, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, that's a pretty long flight, right? Five five hours or something. It so? is, and you can take it off like when you eat, when you know, mm -hmm. have drinks or whatever. You but can they take it off they break. watch you, don't they? Yeah. They tell you they do. If we see you dallying. We're, <laughs> we're you you know, yeah. No dilly dallying with the mask right. on and off. You. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. Yep. So uh, again, we have three selections tonight, uh, but before we start, I was wondering if we could all just take a moment and uh, I'm really feeling the emotion of the women, the females in Afghanistan. Oh yeah. As we know what's just happened over there and the impact on the, on the population there, but really the impact on the women is going to be, uh, I'll just say significant. Yeah. So we got to send we're goosebumps, uh, lots of love and compassion to our sisters in Afghanistan who will be certainly going up against it in the next while. So, yes. Very, yeah, very good, Andrea. Yeah, I, I think that's a, everybody's it's 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 on everybody's mind and heart right now. So I think that's it's good, too. And I just I, I was really feeling the emotion in the, of the, for the women over there, the young girls, et cetera. So, so we're going to stay strong for them. We're going to send good energy for them, right? We're going to keep them in our thoughts so they're not forgotten. Yeah. And we look forward to things getting better over there. Right. Yeah. Right. Feel right? so helpless. It, it's hard because we feel helpless, but what we can do is continue to pray, send that energy intention and also live our, our, our best as women here yes. in our privilege. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You think you've got problems? You have no problems compared to what's going on there. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. yeah, remember that and be grateful for what you have. Yes, indeed. So our, our choices tonight are just as, as different as sometimes they usually are. So I can't <laughs> wait to see how this sort of connects. I know. So our first lady our first guest is someone who kept asking me if she could be part of the show tonight. And I can't say no to her. Elizabeth Taylor. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So there is uh, certainly an icon of the film industry. Uh, very famous woman uh, became famous as a young girl. So she was born in 1932. Uh, her parents were, her father was a, Oh gosh, I forget. He was something very good. <laughs> and her mother was an actress and they lived in London, England, and then they moved back to America uh, where they were originally from when she was you know, about five years old or something, something like that. So she is obviously known as being one of the most beautiful women in the world as well. And what I think is so amazing is that her eyes 
you know, they're sort of that blue violet color. She was also born with a double row of eyelashes, which is considered a wow. genetic mutation. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and I laugh because she was wow, a mutant. <laughs> so you have these anomaly of these almost purple <laughs> eyes, double rowed by black eyelashes. I mean, what a blessing! So it's one way to look at something, you know. Right. What's considered a mutation is not always bad. Wow. Wow. I, I, well, and just one thing I just want to interject that it reminds me of um, Rod, Rodney Mc, Roddy McDowell, that was her her co star in. Yeah. Uh, Black Black Beauty was that what she, the horse movie she was in? Yep. Black, Beauty. Black Beauty. So he said that when he saw her for the first time, he actually started to laugh because he had never seen anyone so beautiful <laughs> in the flesh. He he had he could not he he just laughed because he didn't know what reaction to have. But apparently, she was even as a little girl just so beautiful. So anyway, absolutely uh, was born with beauty. Uh, but behind that were brains. And she started her film career in the 1940s as a young girl. And in the 1950s, she actually wanted to quit. So she was starting to become a young woman. And she realized how much control the movie studios had. And she didn't want that. So she was being pushed into things and doing things that she didn't want to do. So she was very smart, strong-willed, which obviously, you know, uh, one director said they wanted to to break her so they would treat her horribly on set to break her so they could direct her better. Like, just imagine that because she was strong-willed and, and mm -hmm. spoke her mind. So the 50s, she wanted to quit, but she stayed with it. In the 60s, she became the highest paid movie star of the time, you know, on record at the time. And... Uh, she obviously is known for having many husbands. <laughs> so she had seven husbands, but was married eight times. She married one man twice. She had four children. She was obviously, every man in the world wanted to date her. Uh, Howard Hughes apparently offered six figures at the time to marry her when she was 18, something like that. And she declined the offer, but she did want to get married early because she felt with the control of her parents and the control of the studios, that marriage would give her some type of independence. So you see, she was trying to find her way. So she clearly had both, you know what I mean? She was just so smart and knew what she wanted. And she didn't want to be controlled. And who would, right? So she uh, went on, as we know, with her movie career, ups and downs in her life. Uh, at the end of her life, she succumbed to her illnesses. She had quite a lot of illnesses in her life, starting from a child. She had scoliosis. She broke her back while she filmed National Velvet. And the fracture wasn't noticed for a long time, so she had chronic pain. Eventually, they replaced a couple of discs in her spine with donated discs. I mean, I can't even imagine. So that sort of pain, et cetera, probably led to her alcohol and drug abuse later on because, you know, you just that constant pain. She had many illnesses, as I said, she succumbed to them at the age of 79 in 2011. At the time of her passing, her estate was worth a billion, almost a billion dollars. And she was also well known for her philanthropy. We all know that she was a voice for the AIDS cause. Her One of her best friends, Rock Hudson, was the, one of the first one celebrities to come out. With it, she was very angry that nothing was being done. So she, the fame that she, she fought fame because she always was followed by the paparazzi. They want to know her business, who she's dating. This, So parts of fame she hated. So she said, at this time, I'm going to take the fame that I just, you know, despise or whatever and use it for good. So she put her face on a subject matter that everyone was running away from at the time. So she lent herself which was a big thing. And, yeah. and she, also, she also obviously gave to many other charities, et cetera. And she had a lot of success with her perfume and jewelry uh, lines. So I don't know what, why she wants to come in. She asks very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> she could come on. And I, one thing I'm sensing is that is the juxtaposition of this most beautiful woman in the world uh, with all of this money fame, 
and yet all this heavy chronic illness. Mm. Uh, lots of pain and suffering. We know one of her husbands, uh, Mike Todd, died in a uh, airplane crash. Um, so she didn't. She didn't go without suffering. You know, if people think that she had this beautiful, lovely life, she did on one side of it. But on the flip side, there were all these other things going on. And I just love that her, her double black eyelashes were a genetic mutation, <laughs> <laughs> you know, surrounding her purple eyeballs. <laughs> right. Yeah. She, she talks about a little bit about um, that sheltered kind of that sheltered feeling mm -hmm. when she was younger, being a little um, sheltered, protected is the word she used. Yeah. Um, and, you know, now that you describe her, I'm thinking probably because she, uh, part, partly that and partly uh, the family that she was in. Um, but she was very protected, um, kind of like she's showing me, you know, a, a princess in a palace trying to get out. Right. So mm -hmm. to do your own thing. Um, so that makes sense to. Got, they, they wrote that part of history. Right. She said. <laughs> Um. <clears throat> yeah, she had an older brother, and they lived in London. And apparently, Joe Kennedy, the Kennedys' grand, or you know, original, the big guy, uh, he urged them to come back because the war was going to break out or something like that. So they did move back to California. And her mother didn't want her to get into the movies, but that they realized that, that was a way that they could make money at the time. Till they let her be in the movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She absolutely loved life. The feel, the um, like, like that, that lightning you get in your in your soul or whatever. She's describing just. You know when you first fall in love and it's just like whoa, like big, that that kind of feeling. She loved that feeling. She loved life. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there were horrible points to it, um, and dealing with Hollywood and the madness of that. Um, I feel she did well with it, though. I feel like she was she didn't allow it to overtake her. Um, she kind of overpowered it. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she, she kind of twisted it around and made it her rules. I feel like people may have tried to, you know, like that guy admitted saying, you know, trying to break her on set. So she, she had a way with her that um, people would end up, you know, even when she was little before movies or anything like people, you, you, you wanted to give her stuff. You wanted to do stuff for it. You know what I mean? She was one of those people where you just go, Oh, you know, and um, you, not because of just how she looked, but her, her whole being, you, it's like you wanted to give her stuff. or her do stuff for her. Yeah. Her energy. Wow. I also feel she was an empath. Mm. And I felt that while I was reading mm -hmm. about her, I say, like, Oh, she is an empath. <laughs> And again, very wise, wise beyond her years. I think she was an old soul. Mm -hmm, I got that uh, straight yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Old soul and uh, so I've seen ancestors. So connected to the past. New, she just knew stuff, if, you know, just like we do. We do sometimes we just know stuff. She knew she was tapped in. She definitely had the gift. She said it was hard to age up on camera, but um, oh, yeah, uh, she's hoping that she did okay. Because <laughs> I feel like she she knew that she was still beautiful, you know. Well, she had the, she was getting older. Plus, she would you know her weight was going up and down. Right. So everyone criticizing her, you know. There's, I guess, she was expected to always be like that little person, whatever that perfect little girl you thought when she yeah. was little, yeah. We, no, yeah, that's impossible. But yeah, when you're when you're on camera, it, it aging up was hard for her. 
So I'm getting never... lots of, oh, so I'm sorry, Debbie. No, go ahead. Um, I'm getting lots of stuff about men. Um, she, um, she's talking about the fact that um, she adored her father and, um, and her brother, actually. Um, the, and she had a very good uh, view of men growing up. She um, is saying, though, that she looked to men way too much for to 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 help her be whole, because um, it feels like I turn to this man to like protect me. I look to this man to um, you know for for to make my life exciting. It's like I I, I put the kind of um, almost the burden on them to to make me to give me what I wanted. Um, and so it, it, uh, her, her relationships usually ended in a, um, yep. because they couldn't, you know, they couldn't give to her what she needed to find inside. So that I feel like that's one of the messages. It's kind of like, look, you know, look to yourself when you, when you're, message. when you are lacking something or you need something, look within because it's there. Um, a lot of times we reach out, especially as women, we might reach out to a spouse or a, a significant other or whatever, find a boyfriend, you know, whatever that, you know, that kind of thing. And she's just saying, she realized quite late that she needed to get it in here. And she wants to say that um, the one that died in the plane crash, top. Todd, Mike Todd is the, was the love of her life. Yeah. Her life was never the same after he died. Um, but interestingly enough, she's saying that the guy, um, Burton, t um, Richard Burton, Richard Burton, that she married twice. That was her twin flame. She's Aww. saying that was her twin flame. So she had a lot of very powerful relationships in her life that really um she grew a lot she learned a lot as a spirit she learned a lot she grew a lot expanded a lot um because she ha did have to learn to um get through the muck to love these people um there was a lot of stuff there um but i think that's one thing um andrea is and 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 debbie but 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 andrea what my, she may have come through as well as is, is this kind of like look look find this stuff inside. It's there. It's there. You yeah. just need to, um, to know I, that. To know I, that I literally just got that card. I was asking what advice do you have for women, young women today, whatever gold, you don't need someone else to fix you. Oh my right. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I got chilly chills. I know. I, got chilly chills. I know. Cause you're saying, I'm like, that's the card. That's so weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. Again, it's about you. It's not about them. It's not about someone else. Right. And there's the most beautiful woman of the world. Right. Right. But she was primed that way. You yeah. know, that's why she was she was protected. That's what, you know, like a princess in a castle, so to speak. <laughs> so it was like you're primed that way to and and it, you know, you think that that's what's fulfilling is that constant. Yeah. She was primed that way, but she learned. Right. I feel like um, she, yeah. like you said, she gained before she, before she left this plane, she had a great understanding of self-love. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like if she was, you know, in her early twenties now, she may choose never to get married. You know, she may go down, but it certainly she was of the, of that time. And in her situation, she was looking at his marriage as a certain way. I don't know if she'd have that same view today, although she did love to be in love. She loved that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just standing up to the studio, you know, ready to walk away from your whole career because you didn't like how you were being controlled. Yeah, that's huge. Finding your voice like that. And not only finding that voice for herself or having that, but then using that voice for others that didn't have a voice. I think that's like, that's her crowning achievement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the only part of that. Yeah. yeah. It's the, like she said, I'm going to use my fame for, it was a subject matter. No one wanted to even talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was like, no, I'm going to help these people. She raised something like, I think it was 260 million 
Wow. Um, for AIDS research in the, at, you know, in the, what was it? Eighties or something. That's a lot of yeah, money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. She, yeah, she, 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 in with that money, it certainly made it, she saved a lot of lives because the research and the med medication and that's out now and awareness, everything. Yeah. Um, I'll see. And you're right. Um, Andrea, she was, she's saying she was an empath. She didn't, um, she didn't know that kind didn't of, know it. And, but, but she's saying that she, when at growing up and through like her time at the studio stuff, she really felt that that part of her was a, was um, a, a flaw. And as she got yeah. older and she became involved in, um, in uh, raising money for AIDS and, and her philanthropy, she realized what a gift it was. It was, she grew into it. And she said, sometimes, you know, that sometimes you, you have to, that's how it works. You kind of grow into these things. You see things as some kind of deficit early on and may even want to get rid of it. But it, it, it mo mo most of the time, it turns out to be something that really benefits you in, in your life. And it, it turned out to be one of her, she says, her great, one of her greatest gifts. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's interesting, like when you said that, I, I could just see this woman figure herself out. Yeah. Like I just watched her whole life and she just figured herself out. And yeah. Figured out. Oh, yeah. I, I got chills with that for some reason. But yeah, yeah. you're absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. It takes time. You know, it's, it, I think that's another um, message maybe is that, it, you know, sometimes it, it does take time to figure, to figure yourself out and to figure things out. And she, she was so on display, you know, every marriage, mm -hmm. like, Oh, another marriage and yeah. made fun of her weight, made fun of her. It's like everything that, that happened was so on display. And yet at the same time, she's trying to figure herself out and grow and understand. And, and she did, she did in the end, she did. She did it. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Well, I know that, um, you know, I, the, you guys know I don't remember any movies or anything from back in the day, but I can tell you I remember Black Beauty. <laughs> and um, I, I loved I loved that movie and I loved her in it. So she leaves the legacy not on film as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she was in Cleopatra and Giant and, you know, um, lots of movies. So she she had a full life. Yeah. Full. And I feel like she didn't waste any minutes. You know what I mean? Like she was either in love or in a movie or right. entropy, something, or her children. I feel she loved her children. Uh, yeah, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So she wants us to know it's within you. Yeah. Don't look yeah. out here. Yeah. Here. yeah. Don't expect anybody else to fulfill you because you're yes. going to keep searching, keep searching, and, and you're going to keep having tower moments. <laughs> and to um and to do what you can for those who can't. Right? She lent her name to uh, a giant cause, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm for years. She just didn't do it as a fad, then walked away from it. She stayed with it. So yeah, she's, you know, what, what can you do in your life, in your circle, in your community? What can you lend? What can you offer to those who may be in need in your, in your family or, or wherever it is? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> Well, thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, I love, love you, yes. Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. Um, cold check. And her, I mean, just so people, you know, know. I, I mean, I always wonder when people do this, what their energy feels like. Her energy was so light mm -hmm. to, to me. It felt oh, so, so light. light. And so, yeah, yes. it was beautiful yeah. and open. And yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And giving, like a very open giving, light and very enlightened. I feel enlightened, like conscious yes, exactly. awareness. So it's, she's very, yeah, very, very pleasant to 
Yeah, to read. very nice energy. Ooh. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. So, Kim, you are up next yes. with your select. Okay. I chose Laura Ingalls Wilder from the book series, Little House on the Prairie Books. Um, so I, I love Little House on the Prairie, the show. I watched it when I was little. Yep. I introduced it to my daughter when she was little, and it's it's such a great um, thing because she she we watched the show together. It made her so curious. She read the books, and then she got kind of interested in that part of time in history. And we took her to the to Old Sack and went to the old schoolhouse, and you know she it, she really got in really interested in this this. Um, so it did a lot of you know that that uh that book series I think did a lot for kids just because of the time and and oh, everything yeah, totally. But anyway. So um, Laura Ingalls Wilder, she was born um, February 7th, 1867, and she died uh, February 10th, 1957, at the age of 90. Wow. Um, so she's a, she was a writer, a teacher, and a journalist, and most famous, um, like we said, for her Little House in the Big Woods book, uh, book series. And um, it chronicled her life with her family as they moved through the Midwest, eventually settling in Walnut Grove, Missouri. And um, her uh, family consisted of her ma, her pa, uh, Caroline and Charles Ingalls, um, her oldest sister, Mary, she's the one who went blind, which actually, she did actually go blind. Um, the oldest was Mary, then, then her, then Laura, then Carrie. And then there was Charles who passed away as an infant and then um, finally, Grace, the baby, little, the little, uh, the youngest, um, and uh, it, um, you know, the the book spawned the TV series in the seventies. Um, her husband was Almanzo, um, who was ten years older than her, but it, which doesn't seem like a lot today. But she was fifteen when she met him, so fifteen to twenty-five. That was a big. So there was issues with that, you know, that her family had and stuff, but you know, they, they did get married eventually. And, um, they built a farm together. They sold wheat. Um, they struggled financially a lot, um, gradually grew their, their little business and, um, had their farm. And she wrote for a, a magazine called the ruralist or newspaper or something, a publication called the ruralist. Um, and, her column was called as a farm woman thinks and she would just share stories in the column and um she had a daughter who was also a very successful writer rose lane who was um she was like a travel journalist and she wrote she was an incredibly successful writer and um she rose lane was also she and her husband were very good at investing money and so she built on their land and she invested all their money, both the Wilders and her and her husband. And in the stock market crash, they lost everything oh. on. Oh. So um, that's kind of what um, started them actually working on the farm again. Her husband had a stroke, um, Almanzo Wilder had a stroke that left him paralyzed, um, heavily paralyzed on one side of his body. So Rose had a publisher already. She was a travel writer. She said to her mom, why don't you write a book about all the stuff with the family? Because it's all so interesting and the stories are great. She wrote a book and she could not get it published. It was like this big book. The, the themes are very adult. So Rose's publisher said, why don't you make it into children's stories? Break it up into books, have it be kind of more children friendly, child friendly. And that's what she did. And then she, and you know, that's the you oh, know, interesting. history. And so, um, the, but the controversy about her, and and one reason I one thing I thought we could ask her, is that every not everybody says there's a rumor that has always been out there that her daughter Rose was the real writer, and that she just lent the ideas, but that her 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 daughter Rose actually yeah. wrote the books. She was the ghostwriter. Um, and um, they still give out the uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder Medal to writers and illustrator illustrators of children's books it's it's given out by the library association or whatever but and of course she's you know she's there's a museum dedicated to her and her birthplace and they have a you know laura ingalls wilder day you know in missouri and she's you know beloved so it's that's why i picked <laughs> that's interesting i didn't know they were it was written as adults at first because it's such a you know, wholesome TV show. When you think of it, it's not, 
you know, it really doesn't go too far into anything. Um, no, exactly. Well, and I guess there was like a couple, there was a few particular things. One was um, a, a story in it about someone in the town who abused their wife consistently. He actually burned down the house. I mean, just things like that, where it was just like, it was just a little bit too adult, you know, but, um, but it was also very, you know, even in this TV series, you know, they don't really shy away from the real, the realism of it. Um, the threats they had from the, the threat, the constant threat they had from the government and the Native American community, you know, th th that was still going on. Um, people coming back from the Civil War right. completely, you know, um, shattered emotionally and, and mentally. And, you know, there, there's a lot of heavy episodes and, and um, in, in that TV, even in the TV yep, series, there, and yeah, the books too, there's a lot of yeah. things as well. You know, trying to make ends meet and, and yes, all that kind of yeah, thing. exactly, exactly, exactly. And Nellie Olson, yes, <laughs> <laughs> Nellie. I just uh, when I used to watch that show, I would just think she is the meanest girl in the world. In the I've world, I've never seen a girl that mean. She was the meanest girl in the world. <laughs> it was perfect casting. That poor girl. No, I know. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. that whole show perfect casting i mean they were all so good in that so anyway yeah i love that show yeah, yeah. Um, all right so let's let's i'm gonna see if i can it's funny because she sits here she's like you know pressing out her any wrinkles you know <laughs> getting all ready for the uh <laughs> to talk you know okay um she's she seems very because i just she had me sit up you know so i feel like she's very proud she's a proud woman i um i i, I think it's almost to her offensive that people would think that if if Rose wrote the books, she would have given the she would have wanted Rose to have her daughter to have the the name. Why would she take the name? I mean, she's asking, why would I why would I want I would want my daughter to shine? You know, what kind of mother do you think I am? I if my daughter wrote it. However, that being said, she she said she did help. I mean, like, you know how you write something. And you say, hey, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And they edit and help you. That type of help, yes. That's it. That's is exactly what I got. Debbie, yeah, that's what I'm more, getting. More like an editor. Yeah. She was she had, she had a part in it, but it was more like an editor. It wasn't really a um a uh yeah, it wasn't like writing in any way. Yeah, she yeah. didn't ghost write the books for her mother. Her mother Correct. would have said, How does right. this sound? Or should I include the story about this? You know. Uh, right. Because taking it from the the dark reality <laughs> of the real life and putting it into more of a, a form where um, everybody could read it and not get PTSD from somebody else's life, um, yeah. So she it was her stories that she was putting out. Her daughter would take a look and and make some maneuvers mm -hmm. and give it back, but yeah. it was it was it was her. She said I would have. Why would have? Why would I take my daughter's glory if she wrote that? If she wrote it, what would it benefit? Or they could have co-authored it if that was the case. Right. If they co-authored it, you know, both wrote the stories. But because she's she's still sitting here like all her shoulders back, all proud. Mm. Oh. I asked, what is your message for young women uh, or women today? And it's love, you know, love. There's a dove there and she's looking very, as you say, prim and proper. <laughs> love yourself, which is what Elizabeth was telling us, right? Right, right. Same, same up. exactly. Love. And live in love as we're saying what she went through. Like, can you imagine you'll just live in a barn on the prairie <laughs> and it's cold and there's not running water or, you know, you got to 
share your everything. You don't even have anything. <laughs> she said, um, I asked her, you know, how you lived a long, you know, you had a long life here. And she said, yes, I always look forward to the sun coming up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> There's gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always looked forward to that sun coming up. So, and that's what I was going to say is that that is exactly what I'm getting, Andrea, is that she's saying her, her life, that life was a life of gratitude because she's saying that um, if you, if you have known being on the brink of starvation, every time you have a meal, you're so grateful when you have known being freezing in the winter, every time there's a fire in the fireplace, you're grateful. There was, there was these small little the very, very simple things we, we really do take for granted now. They were so thankful um, because they had known such hardship. And of course it's hard, but but she's saying how, when she sees that life, it was it was a life of, like you said, love and gratitude. Um, she's saying she doesn't know, um, not she doesn't know. She marvels at how people can find their center in, in, in our world today, because we do have so much comparatively to what we had. We have also the media and things that bombard us daily. They didn't have that. It was so, it, in the comparison, it was so peaceful, mm -hmm. so quiet, so simple. And now everything is, is, it's very complicated. And so she, it's like, almost like hats off to you guys, because it is, it is a hard, it's a, it's a hard road that we're, we're, we're hoeing. It really is. It's, it's difficult. So, um, but as far as like, it's, it's almost like she, we felt we, we were like, uh, you know, poor you. Cause you had, you were so hard, but she's kind of like, poor us. <laughs> poor us. Yeah. Like, There's so much more today to, to drop, to drag you away from who you mm -hmm. really are. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so much, but um And their, their sense of family and community would have been very strong in those days, right? Survival. Because, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They would have so, known yeah. everyone in their town. I don't even know my neighbor's name. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's survival. Yeah. <laughs> well, but go you, find out her name, Andrew. Well, I do, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you notice that when we have a disaster, um, you know, we all go out onto to our porches and meet our neighbors for the first time when there's right. something that we mm -hmm. need to come together for. Um, yeah. There, then right. it was a way of life. You, you oh. depended on each other for survival and um, you, you were each other's family. Yeah. Yeah. On the daily versus, as you say, when an event right. happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Let's see. I'm and it's amazing to think all of that was true. You know, the things with her, her older sister and, and just, I don't know, all the trials and tribulations they would have had. Right. And it's funny. It's interesting. Um, smiling heart. Cause she's saying living in the rhythm of nature is the best. And mm. she keeps showing me this, this, the stream that went by their house. And I, and it is like that. It is like that. That was the rhythm they lived by. That was, and, and it is that it, it, it's, it's the rhythm of nature. I mean, uh, you know, we have to go out and actually find that now. It's not oh. outside. Most of us anyway, it's not right outside. Yes. Our house. What we a terrible to thing. Well, we have to go find nature. We have to go Come find out. it. Yeah. Right. Wow. Isn't that a sad thing? It is. You know, when I go to the, I go to a, a silent retreat every year, usually a couple times a year. And when I go the first day, I'm just like, am I going to be able to do this? Because it's too quiet and I don't have a computer and I don't have anything. <laughs> I just think, am I going to be able to do this? And by the, by the last day, everything has shifted my sleep, my, the way, the way I sleep, when I, when I eat, every, like my rhythm is completely different in that situation where there aren't all of these distractions and things going on. It's, it is interesting. And, and that is a place where it's very, it's you commune with nature and you're it's, everything's quiet. There's nothing, no distractions. And I, my rhythm is completely different in that situation. Are, you able, to, are you able to write and stuff like that? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Go. You can write and read and you do meditation, but it's, oh. but it, but it, but 
as far as like my sleep schedule, the way I eat, every everything's different. And um, it just shows how how we are just kind of bombarded with with everything all the time. And what, even though we we want to think it doesn't affect us that that much, but it really does, you know, it really does. So I can't imagine living in that time with that. It would be a kind of peace that we really don't know anymore unless you live in that kind of environment, you know, unless you do live in that. Um, I understand why people do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the the message she's bringing in on my side is um, embrace one another, love one another. And it goes exactly with the card she brought in with you, Andrea, the love. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the most important thing is loving one another, loving your neighbor, um, bringing in that that understanding and um, just it doesn't mean a, a physical embrace, but embrace your neighbor and your neighbor could be, you know, five States over. I'm just saying in general, that embrace of your neighbor and understand, um, because, uh, again, we've lost, she, th- she feels we've lost that kind of now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's her message to us is, um, bringing that back in and embracing and that empathic piece. A lot of us here are empaths. So we're like, what we do, we love our neighbor, you know, like that. But, um, as a whole, um, we've, we've lost. So this is, so a lot of this, it sounds like, um, is going to be about love, right? Because Elizabeth Taylor was like self-love. And then she's saying, love your neighbor, love the people mm-hmm. around you. It really is. And, and it's, I think it's the, the, the messages we need right now, what we, how we started this with the stuff going on in Afghanistan and just around the world, but all the people in such need with a need of such compassion and love. It's um, yeah. I think it's, you know, and, and then, you know, to have self-love so that, you can you can also survive it and and get through it and and maintain your own you know um, positive energy and good good energy yeah yeah and understanding that because she's showing me um <laughs> she's showing me a place setting of these old utensils that you would use for eating right and you have you know one fork and one spoon and and you you had those each night you didn't have a whole drawer full you had what you needed and that was enough, right? Mm-hmm. But you can't judge the next door neighbor who did have five forks, five, you know what I mean? When you only had one fork, you didn't say, well, they, they, you know, there's no judgment back and forth. She felt that, um, I mean, there probably was some judgment, but I'm just saying in general, what she's trying to bring in with this message is um, not everybody has to be in your lane for you to love them and understand them. Right. And so she was trying to show me through these utensils. I feel like <laughs> it's just like, okay, they're not in our same lane, but we can still right. love them and understand them. And, mm-hmm. and um, so, but it's like, we all want everybody to be in our lane, you know, because that's the right lane. We don't know that. What's the right lane? What does that even mean? No. Right. The, the right lane is you are in your lane, they're in your, their lane and you understand, you understand their journey and they understand your journey. That's being in the right lane. Anyway, right, thank you, right. Laura. You're making me yes, all passionate. I know. I know. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I love when we do this show. <laughs> uh, just quickly, someone I believe was asking what this deck is. Oh, yes, they were. This is the Vintage Oracle deck. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It's all the Victorian or like really old. That is beautiful. I love that deck. And uh, Rich asked if I saw your email. I did see you in my inbox. However, my inbox is overflowing (laughs) and I'm far behind Mm -hmm. on emails, but I will get back to you. And I just want to pause and say hello to everyone. Yes, hello, hello everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, so for joining us today. Enjoy hanging out with you all on this Monday night. So thank you for being here with us as we celebrate these women from the past. 
which brings us to Debbie and your choice for tonight. Whoa. <laughs> Are y'all ready for this? I think that's a song, isn't it, Kim? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. It is. yeah it is. All right. <laughs> awesome. I was waiting for you to sing it. I don't know what it, I, I can't, I can hear it, but I don't, I don't know Isn't what it that is. Line to a dance song. Y'all ready for this? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Like a 90s dance song or something. Okay. Yeah, it's a good dance song. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So I, I, I had to pick two ladies um, and they, uh, these beautiful women, they, they kind of come together. So Yes, so my two picks are Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson. And there they are across the bottom of your screen if you missed the names. Okay, so these ladies, man, powerful. And they've been here since the beginning. And I can tell you they are hanging out with Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> so excited to meet her. They're like, whoa, okay. They're like, what do we do? She's in with us, you know. Anyway, so fun. Okay, so I will start with Sylvia. No, actually, I'm going to start with Marsha. Marsha uh, was born August 24th, 1945, and she passed July 6, 1992. Um, she was born known as Malcolm Michaels Jr., um, but later changed to Marsha. Um, she is known as a, a gay liberation activist and self-identified drag queen. Um, she is was known as an outspoken advocate for gay rights and a prominent figure of the Stonewall Uprising of 1969. So I'm going to pause here for a second. You have to understand these times. She was born in 1945. Being gay was against the law. Um, it also was in the DS, at some point it was in the DSM, whatever, whatever it was back then, DSM-4, DSM-3, um, as a, a mental illness. So this is what you're up against back in those days, okay? Um, so later, um, she is known for the gay liberation and AIDS activists. So you want to know the connection with Liz Taylor, right? Um, okay. So years and years of being an activist and an um, outspoken and um, advocate for the AIDS and um, being that front, front person, you know how hard that is. I just can't imagine it for her. Um, in... In, 19, in 1992, um, she was found face down in the Hudson River. Mm. And um, the police automatically, without investigation, it, reported it as a suicide. Um, so there's controversy over that. Um, others uh, know that um, she had been being harassed by some outspoken people against who she is and what she represented. And, um, and despite the large head wound, the yeah. police said that she was, it was a suicide. So that, that was her, her best friend is, was Sylvia Rivera, and they did a lot of work together. Um, of course, Sylvia, uh, Sylvia was born in 51 and died in, 20, uh, in uh, 2002. And um, again, uh, oh, before I move on to this, uh, Marsha wants me to let you know. <laughs> she's, she's like, pause. Um, uh, she, um, her early life was hard as well, growing up, mm -hmm. and how difficult that was um, being um, gay and black. 
and um, I feel like uh, if I'm not getting the both both the stories confused, um, that um, no, okay, I am getting them confused. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but she she is saying that it was you can't imagine what to overcome just in those times being black, right? Add this to the pile of that. Um, and then to be able to step up and still be that voice and that advocate um, and make a, such a huge impact in the movement of, of um, for this, for this, how do you, marginal, right? Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. When you're looking, okay. So her best friend, Sylvia Rivera, who we'll look at now, um, she was born um, July 1951 and then passed 2002, 20, 2002. Okay, so she was also um, the gay liberation and the transgender rights activist um, and um, the liberation, she was part of the Liberation Front and also um, part of the AIDS advocacy too. Um, she was the one that was born uh, when she, okay. Her parents died when um, she was, her, her dad committed, no, her dad left, okay, abandoned them. Her mom then con committed suicide. She was three. She went to live with her grandparents uh, her grandma and grandma didn't like an effeminate boy. And, um, uh, he was, he, he was kicked out of the home or left the home at, a, at 11. He was oh. on the streets. Uh -huh. Um, and, um, he was forced into, um, prostitution and then a whole big group of, um, of drag queens picked him up and took him home and took care of him until he grew up and you know was old enough yeah oh <laughs> took him in as their own and um so oh. he was able to become wow. and and that's where he gained a lot of his strength and understanding and so forth but again this is um 1973 you guys this is this is still considered um mental illness and like all that and um so you're facing this and you're facing the eighties with the AIDS and you're and on all that. And, um, she, she, she is absolutely, these two are absolutely the forefront, um, of this movement. Um, a lot of people consider, um, Sylvia as, uh, they, they, they go like this with her and, um, What's her name? Who sat on the bus and didn't move? Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. She's like the Rosa Parks of of this move of the gay liberation. Um, they consider her that. So I wanted to I wanted to show you all some incredible pictures. So um, they also have. If you want to look them up, they also have some yeah. great. They have. She has a street named after Sylvia Rivera Ray in New York City in Greenwich Greenwich Village <laughs> in her honor. Um, oh, it looks like there's some kind of podcast too. Um, anyways, I, I'm not finding pictures, but. So they met and became good friends and activists together. Yep. And I wanted to show you a picture of them early on. Oh, here we go. Because there's a picture of the two of them when they're young, mm -hmm. uh, younger. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to find those pictures. Um, I'm having a hard time finding pictures, guys. And then how did Sylvia pass away? Um, okay. Sylvia passed. Oh, here's. Um, Where is, sorry. 
I thought I had a picture. Um, okay, Sylvia passed away. Um, because I had the two stories going. Sorry, guys. Um, Complicate oh, liver cancer. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In just, many ways, Sylvia was the Rosa Parks of the modern transgender movement, a term that was not even coined until two decades after she passed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, amazing ladies. And um, I. It's hard to understand. They're like going like this. With, oh. They're sitting here going like this, dotting their little cheek so yeah it's just hard to understand why people hate or didn't i know that i guess religion made them or whatever back in the old days but there's just no reason to hate uh anyone and especially a drag queen <laughs> <laughs> more fun than anybody <laughs> Right. Well, right. It's it's fear, right? They it's they fear, fear what they, they fear what they don't understand. And I think back then there was a lot to not understand. It, it wasn't out enough to talk. We we talk about we we know people now. We all know people that are gay. That we all know people that you know we yeah. we we um. It's uh it's in the sunlight, you know. And I think when it's not, and when it's buried and it's deep and dark, and it 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 lends itself to people being afraid of it and i think it that's why it's so important i think to talk to talk about this stuff and to to um to bring it out in the open and allow people to tell their stories and allow yeah. people to be who they are and you know people, but i think i mean to answer if i can answer you i'm not that you know <laughs> i don't know everything but i think it is fear i think it's so really, that's all it is boils down to fear and, and just depending on the person what they were afraid of yeah yeah exactly so here's a younger picture of them when they were younger. <laughs> and then. Um, yeah. I mean, think of the courage and the strength of these two. Yeah. To stand up at a time where. <sighs> and here's a picture of them when they were older. Oops. How cute. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I keep being, I keep hearing what's not in our lane, right? It, we're, we need to, not everybody needs in, to be in our lane. We need to, to understand everybody has their own lane and accept and love. And exactly. It doesn't have to be our lane. No. To bring in love, understanding. And um, this is still going on very, you know, of course, we've made strides. And, you know, it's courageous ladies like these two who um, paved the way. And um, yeah, I got justice is coming. So in the sense that all of those in the past who were, you know, criticized, hurt, beat, whatever horribleness ever happened, it's going to change. It's, it's taking longer than probably anybody wants, but it's, you know, in my own lifetime, I see a huge change right. in what's acceptable and, and okay to be. Being oh, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my lifetime, I mean, it was against the law being gay oh my goodness. and you would literally, uh, you, you could, be arrested or get kicked out of school or um you couldn't gather together that you would be the police would come in and they would you know what i mean like they would stop you for for no reason i read some some of um both of these gals stories and they would be randomly beaten just by walking because you're walking down the street by police oh my gosh. so <sighs> Yeah. Um, so t uh, two things. I feel um, 
Marsha, I feel really strongly um, for whatever reason. Um, but she is like, um, I did not commit suicide. And I want that known because I would never leave my friends. I would never leave my um, leave anyone to to uh, fight this battle without me. I'd never do that. And he, she showed me a group of men. Um, and then she also, um, she also is saying she was, uh, she wasn't, she doesn't feel like it was bravery. It was, um, she was committed. She was committed. And that gave her, um, she was committed to a cause. She was committed to, um, to, to making life better for people that come, came after them. Um, she knew somewhere as inside her, she just knew that it probably wouldn't, um, they wouldn't push the ball that far up the hill, but they would, they would just try, they would just try. So she was committed to that effort. And, and that, um, uh, gave her um, what she needed to, to, to keep going and to do this. Um, it had to be done. She's saying it had to be done. Yeah. It was a commitment. Yeah. It, yeah. It's also it's interesting too, because it almost makes me feel like uh, it was a commitment she made prior to, to coming here. It's almost like it was part of her contract. Like it was, it was a, it was, it was a soul commitment as well mm. that she, she knew somewhere inside. She knew this was her cause. This was her thing. So Elizabeth Taylor said, love yourself. Right. And Laura said, love your neighbors and, and things like that. And then what I see here with Sylvia and Marsha is that they just wanted to be able to love who they loved, right? right. <laughs> I got goosebumps. Oh, they just pulled it. I know we do. <laughs> they just they just started crying. We were living in love and yeah. wanted to love who they love, but I mean that's just such a horrible stain on humanity. Yeah. They wanted to be themselves and love who they loved. That people were trying to stop and hated their love. Can you imagine? And, and Sylvia was transgender. She she was able to do some of the operation, and but she does not like any of the um, the labels. She said there should be no labels, and like you said, Andrea, she's she's saying spot on. She said we should be able to love who we love and be who we are, be who we are and love who we love mm -hmm. without any labels. That's what she wanted to see. But it, it didn't happen in her lifetime and it hasn't happened yet. Right. We still need some labels to get, uh, uh, have help people wrap their mind around. Right. And then we can release the labels. I mean, I can understand some people can't get their head around it or it's against their religion or something, but you don't respond with violence. You respond with. Yeah. Uh, but again, Kim's right too. And the, and the girls know that too. They know that it was out of fear and, um, but it still needs to change. You know what I mean? They're like. Hmm. And I think, you know, I think that's, that is why part of why, we label is because it's it's to to be able to understand it to not be afraid of it because now i know what it is it right. has a name it has, it has a label a that's what we do on yes. earth right we name everything yeah we got to label everything um even you know ourselves we have our names you know it's like we've got to label everything so we understand it and i think maybe that's the first like step in it's it's a and and you're right the goal is no no labels it is what it is you are who you are. It you're 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 a Debbie and you're Andrea and I'm Kim and that's that's you know and then there's all this stuff that we are. Um, but 
but I think that is a why people do label. I think it's because, okay, now at least it has this name and I know what that is. And I, it has, it has all these facets. It's the way we organize, I think as, as earthly. I, yeah, I think it helps, right? You know, like I don't need a label to, to know you. Like I don't right. know your right. label, but I right. understand that maybe some other people do just so they can ease into the topic. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, but eventually, I don't think those labels will matter. No, you know, yeah. no. The generation or two away, but it won't matter. Yeah. Right. And they're working on that. Um, right. I, I'm seeing that they both are actually working as um, um, entities of comfort mm -hmm. to those who are struggling mm -hmm. with um, with any of these issues of the um, LGBTQ, um, that they literally go and help support those who, um, and bring an energy of love and light and comfort. Uh, because so many people do, uh, Marcia is saying so many people do commit suicide in our community. Um, the young ones, she's, she said the young ones, and um, that's if we want to help support, that's where our support needs to go is to the young ones. Mm -hmm. We lose so many to suicide every year. Um, and it, it, it's grieving that it's still so hard to accept somebody else's, somebody else in their own lane. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and we're talking about love. We're not yeah. talking about people who are trying to rob banks. Yeah, exactly. Right. They are exactly. trying to, their vibration is very high. They're in love, right? That's yes. all this lovely energy. They want to create a life together. And someone wants to come along and say, no, in fact, I hate this. And no, you can't. Like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And there's, I, and I also get pick up uh, um, a lot along those lines, Andrea, is that they, they, these two have such a joy about them. They're, they had fun. They want us to know they had fun. They yeah. really had fun, a lot of fun um, in, in their life. It wasn't, um, I'm you know, all, all this stuff. Right yeah. They do, but they're, yeah, they're, they, they, they do have a sense of fun about them and a, and a, exactly. and a, they're a very light, uh, very, feel yeah. them. I feel like they laughed a lot and, and it, yeah. And, and, and you'd have to, you'd have to, when you're, when you're it's in so such a heavy yeah. situation, you'd have to have a good sense of humor and you'd have to have levity in your life. Yeah. You'd have to. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. And I, I love their energy and I love his spirit whisperer just said, <laughs> I'm older than Moses. <laughs> uh, so yeah, before it was a word. Um, you definitely yeah. have a, a, an understanding of these ladies and kind of what yeah. they had to push through. Spirit Whisper, you were one of those people who pushed through too. You're one of those, yeah. well, one of those, well, those trucks that kind of opened yeah. up the ground for us and, and paved the way. Because we, you know, we Thank say we stand on the shoulders of those women that came before us and right. say, with the gay and, and transgendered and drag queen communities, they stand on the shoulders of those before them. Yes. And, you know, Sylvia and Marsha are part of history, like history makers and made change. They, they, their life was very much worth something for change, right? Yeah. Oh, I just had a, like a, like the more people didn't like them, the more impact they were having. It was kind of this weird thing. Interesting, like, yeah. They became more famous be and moved it further because of the pushback they were getting. So it's almost like it had to happen for this to come, like for them to be center stage. Right. If there was no pushback mm -hmm. and no, no one saw them, then it would be a nothing. And they, they rose to the occasion very glamorously. Right. <laughs> yes, they did. Very glamour. Both beautiful yes, women. Well, yes. yep. um, and I'm so blessed to have met them. Yeah. 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 I pulled the miracle card. So what they did, yellow's what you do. We've got the miracle card. They were a gift. Mm. They still are. 
Um, they're, they're going like this. <laughs> just like that. They're like. <laughs> mm. And and on the on the other side of that is that uh, they were they became women in in a way like uh, you said Sylvia had part partial surgery. Yes. And they both were drag queens. Was so they were embodying women, the feminine divine. They were tapped in. They were born that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were born in that feminine. Yeah. Divine. And. Um, and they lived it. They lived it out loud. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Right. Right. <laughs> so love, love, man. That's the message tonight. Yeah. For sure. Um. I feel like they and, go to every pride event too. I feel oh, like. Oh yeah, and they're on the floats. They're in the crowd. <laughs> they, they love it. They to keep that energy up and and support. Um, but again, they, they really, if they're saying, if we wonder what to do is to find some way to, if we can't step in ourselves to find a, a way to support, um, there's hotlines for, um, for these kids that call in and, you know, I'm gay. I can't tell anybody, you know, like that. Right. I want to die and like that. So there's hotlines like that. There's also uh, community centers and, and all sorts of things that um, that are out there that we can tap into some way or another um, so to help. It was in the past, right? So, And, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting because um, Elizabeth, you know, is right here with them as well. Just, you know, she wanted to hang out during their story. And um, Laura's here too, the whole gang. But um, Elizabeth is saying, you know, keep keep this voice up, keep this, keep talking about it like um, it's an everyday conversation, and um, keep keep putting a put a voice behind what needs to be seen, what needs to be heard. And um, she says uh, she keeps uh, she keeps showing me the word AIDS. And um, um, the impact she had with that, you know, with her face, right? You see, uh, Andrew, you said her face or whatever. Um, she says, whatever platform you have, just keep bringing truth and love and light to this community. And um, we're all connected. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> we're, we're all connected. <laughs> You're all connected, yeah. yes. Um, I'm feeling kind of bizarrely giddy hanging out with these four. <laughs> uh, woo -woo, woo -woo. Say, and four, four really like nice, pleasant energies. You know, yeah. sometimes you when you get into these, you know, heavier stories, you'll it will feel a little heavier or a little. Um, you can still feel some of the like. I'm a little mad still or whatever. Um, the four just lovely energies to bring in today. I mean, really just, you know, high, high vibration energies. You can feel it. And and just like easy breezy, just like, yes, they're happy. They're living in love. That's the mm -hmm. message they want to share. Soft, so no yeah. wonder this felt light tonight. Like just, right. You know, love. Exactly. Now I know that the I know that um, the two women do want to come back. Okay. Like they do want to come back. Um, they're not quite in line yet because they're doing work there that they want to do mm -hmm. as well, and still kind of just like loving the freedom of being, you know, uh, and of course being in the ultimate love. It's hard to leave, but they do, they do still feel a mission. And um, so they will come back. Yes. Well, maybe we should have like a gay pride night where we talk to gay, you know, gay um, activists, people that were, act, you know, Ooh. activists in the gay community. Yes. Because there have been, you know, so many and they paved the way, and like I said, they paved the way, right? Yeah. Excellent idea. Good idea. 
writing it down right now. Write it down. <laughs> uh, Connie, you wanted to know who we read on tonight. You got a year late. So Elizabeth Taylor was first, then Laura Ingalls Wilder. And then the last two, Debbie picked two awesome ladies, Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Cat and Mama Meow, Harvey Milk, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and people who gave their lives, exactly, to this, yeah. you know, the cause. Um, somebody was asking about Eleanor Roosevelt. We, we read on Eleanor Roosevelt, yeah. didn't we? We yes. read on Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah. I can't, I'm not sure who asked that, but you can go back in the old episodes. Some are on my channel, some are on um, Andrea's channel, and some are on Debbie's channel. So you can probably well, find Yeah, I've been them. trying to keep yeah. track of them all and a link to oh. each and who we read on. So I yeah. will post See, that. I, I love you, Andrea. Yeah, I know. I That's... will post that below um, <laughs> after the show. Great. I love it. So, um, Awesome. Yeah, let's keep spreading that love, you guys. Yeah. And um, stop trying to keep putting everybody in your lane. Enjoy that they're in their own lane. Exactly. Enjoy what they bring wow. in their journey. Don't love try. your lane. Let them love theirs. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wonderful. So next Monday, we will be on Debbie's channel. Yep. Mm -hmm. So check out our next installment on Monday. And, uh, and yes. yeah. <laughs> hit the thumbs up and yeah. Isn't it's it a really weird fun. energy, you guys? Are you, really are you feeling it too? Yeah, I feel really lightheaded and very, it just feels very, I almost feel like I could, like I could be lifted. Like float. I could be float. lifted. I literally feel like, like I could just very strange. float. Yeah, I think it's, it's the love vibe. It's raised us so high that you know we're all yeah, we're in a lot of our chairs. I like it here, and it's yeah. the it's the peace that they they're very they're at peace. All of yeah, them. all of them. Yeah, yeah, which is really nice. There's no sort of unfinished business. It's just peace, acceptance, love, and wanting to share that. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, let's share the love, guys. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Hug in the earth. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.